everybody, this is Dust for Dust on Gaming here on Twi on YouTube. So today we're going to be playing a couple quick matches with a deck called Red Green Aggro. Um, some people might call it Red Green Monsters um, here in Modern. Very similar to Naya Monsters or Red Green Monsters in Standard right now. Obviously a previously existing archetype in Standard several years back. Um, this deck is kind of a cross between Ponza and um, the Mono Red Bomat Courier deck that popped up at the last Star City Games Open. Um, as far as like the similarities to Ponza, you got four RBL, four Utopia Sprawl, some number of Blood Moons and Stone Rains in the main deck. Um, but this deck is a lot more aggressive than the typical. Um, uh, pawns of decks, you've got Strangle Root Guys, Groundbreakers, in addition to Blood Roy Dells, Tireless Trackers, and Kitchen Finxes, and then Storm Russ at the top end. So you're trying to curve out like 1 to 3 to 4 to 5 in this deck. Um, it's trying to get your dead as quickly as possible, both to supplement either going to the face or getting blockers out of the way. Um, so. This deck looks like it's trying to hedge a little bit. Like, you've got um, Groundbreakers in the same deck as Kitchen Finxes and Tireless Trackers. Um, it's entirely possible that something along the lines of Stranglerroot Geist or. Uh, not Stranglerroot Geist. Uh, Goblin Rabble Master or something should be in the main deck for a more aggressive feel. But I'm trusting Fury, as his username on MTG Goldfish is. Sorry, I can't remember your exact username from Twitch at the moment. But uh, I'm trusting his build. Um, one thing, he only sent me a 14 card sideboard. I'm going to submit the link that he sent me in the description for the deck. But my addition was a little bit weird. Um, it's Outpost Siege, but we'll get to that in a minute. Rest of the sideboard, some number of relics of Progenitus, the four scavenging ooze. So you have plenty of graveyard hate between three main deck scavenging oozes, three relics on scavenging ooze, uh, three ancient grudges. Uh, pretty good against Affinity, pretty good against the Blue Prison deck that's popped up, pretty good against Lantern, decent against Tron. Um, one thing I might consider is a split on Ancient Grudge and a Braid. A Braid would definitely come in in certain matchups where Lightning Bolt is good, and then one Dire Fleet Daredevil. This card just seems to be popping up in every red deck that can play him in Standard and Modern. Uh, Molten Rain when you need more, a little bit more land destruction or disrupting your opponent. Crumble to Dust when you want to take out a Tron or a Valakit. Obstinate Baloth when you need a little more life gain or good hedge against the Leon of the Veil. Thrun against control decks and decks with a bunch of counter spells or removal. Outpost Siege as a random card. This one's a little bit split, so. Never a creature lose the battlefield, deals one damage to a creature or player. So, dragons. So if your opponent's got sweepers, you can dome them for like 3, 4, 5. Um, also, cons is the version you'd use most, and it's like kind of like Chandra's ability on Chandra Torch of Defiance, other than you can play lands with it too. Uh, it's possible it should be like a Chandra Torch of Defiance too. But this deck is more heavily slanted towards green, so sometimes the double red could be a little bit difficult to come by. And then another Storm Breath Dragon when you need a... F Big, big end enclosure, like against Jund or Blue White Control, especially. Alright, so with that being said, don't have a ton of time. Gotta be up for work in the morning. Yada, yada, yada. Here we go! Alright, red, green, aggro. Hopefully the cues will be quick, or I may only be able to play one. Yes, I'm sure I'd like to play red, green, aggro. But, uh, this deck really looks enjoyable on the surface um like especially if you can curve like one drop into three drop into four drop five drop a lot um you only have 20 lands so could mulligan a little bit to lands grew um so again i was talking about a little bit earlier in the deck tech um you could have problems by trying to split the aggressive element with a grindy element like kitchen finks feels more like a sideboard card in this deck and like you want something like Goblin Rabble Master but maybe there's enough uh, Eggro decks or Burn or such in your meta that you want that. Uh, Scavenging Use is an interesting one. Um, can definitely be an aggressive card to a certain extent. Also sometimes may just be a 2-2 but I'm assuming 
a lot of creatures are dying if there's a lot of creature combat going on, etc. Uh, hopefully this Q will pop soon. Beyond that, the one of P and Kirin seems fine in like a lot of matchups where there's some grindier elements. So, as Fury said when I was talking to him about the deck, it's got some grindy elements. You got the P and Kirin large, you got the tireless trackers, the Kitchen Finxes. It's entirely possible that that uh, I'll post CJ to the sideboard should be a another tireless tracker, but I think the deck's already pretty glutted on three drops. Okay, hopefully the Q pops here shortly. As I've said that before. Uh, sideboard, um, a lot of different things. The four scavenging use seems like it might be a little overkill. Um, Ancient Grudge, like I said, should probably be a split. Direfleet Daredevil might be a second one that would warrant a second of. Um, it serves as pseudo graveyard hate for certain things, and also is another two drop threat can be difficult for your opponent to interact with. <laughs> Alright, wish our opponent good luck. Um, this hand is very mana heavy, but we're definitely going to keep it because we have one drop into three drop, four drop. Hopefully we'll draw more gas. I'm probably gonna la oh, they might be on pause of themselves. Um, hmm. So if opponent is showing us Ponza, do we really want to run out this Utopia Sprawl? Go ahead and name green on it. Because this could very easily be Ponza. Okay. All of Roots. Less likely to be Ponza now. And we continue to draw lands. Groundbreaker. Put our opponent to 12 here. I mean, next turn, if we go Blood Braid into another whatever, we could certainly get them a little bit. So our opponent's got here. Four drop. Oh, Avalanche Riders, yay. Alright. Looks like we're up against some type style of Kiki Core deck. Scavenging Ooze, go. Hardly our most exciting turn three play. Let's see if they play the Echo Cost here. Probably not. to use this ability, yes. Reclamation Sage. So I'm not really sure like what our opponent's overall game plan is. Spin the wheel. Stone range, sure, I'll go ahead and blow up your not gonna trade Bloodbird Elf for their actually I probably should just keep try, try to keep them off of court a little bit. Sure. Okay. Wall of oh knowing. Going to eight's a little dangerous against some style of Kiki Core deck. Um, hmm. So we just spin the wheel again. Maybe we'll hit something like a Blood Moon. Oh, Tireless Tracker here is perfectly reasonable. Glad we did not play our land. Gonna do that. Go 
go ahead and grab a Stomp Rooney. So we have no need to hold up the mana this turn. Selfless Spirit certainly screws up the math a little bit. Dogs are barking at nothing, because they're barking at nothing. Get another clue. So even if our opponent has something like a path here, we've noted some cards, plus we have another, we have a scavenging use here to really uh, take advantage of some stuff. Sure. We well, could easily have Court of Calling here, so it's not like we're getting any huge advantages. Starting a root geist. Uh, Geist is okay here, not great. Ward's very clogged up, our opponent could have Court of Calling. I think the card we're probably most interested in drawing is Stormroot Dragon. this, shock this in, play the scavenging ooze, hold up some scavenging ooze activations. It's very likely, like, if our opponent has Court of Calling here, I just like to shock this in, get a clue, play a scavenging ooze. So I'm presuming our opponent's a Court of Calling deck. They could get, like, Eternal Witness, start that chain. Looks like that's what's going on here. Looks equals four, sure. What, Wall of Omens? Yeah, that's fine. So they need another cord here and we're dead. Another Bird of Paradise, that means I can cast a Kiki-Jiki next turn. Just courting her for Kiki Jiki. Show me you got it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. All right. So, this is a matchup we're lacking some amount of um, additional interaction. The sideboard is going to be an issue. Um, like having an abrade or two. I'm trying to think what other cards make sense in this matchup. Daredevil, not really. I guess it could potentially get a path or a cord or something. Eh, why not bring it in? Take out these stone reins. Our opponent's deck is mana hungry, but... Um, some amount of blood moons are fine. The rest of these cards don't make a ton of sense. So, the reason we're bringing in the Dire Fleet Daredevil is we have we can potentially get a big, big enough board presence. Yeah, board presence board presence that we could play this, play out Arbor Elf 
We don't have a ton we can do with the mana next turn, but, you know. Whatevs. He and Kira Nalar. Um. This on green. This, do that. Play out Geist, Bulch Bird. Get in with Starting Root Geist. Probably have something like Wolf Omens here. Of resurgence, that's not nice. Hmm. Well, Fury, I'm definitely seeing a problem with, uh, Creature-ish based decks here. Um, red, this. Definitely wanting like some type of roost or flame slashes or breeze on the sideboard. <sighs> trying to think what other. That said, turn three storm breath's pretty good. Sure. Bring back as a three two. Yep, thinks is fun. Another Geist, eh? Alright, so... Nope, don't want to trigger Finks again, so we're going to go ahead and... Hit you a Thornbarf. Tap, tap, play this PNLR, and next turn you're dead. Unless you have Restoration Angel, question mark, three mana. Eldritch Evolution for what? Swagdad? Go up to 15, I guess. Get a... Archangel of Thune. Hmm. So we are one mana away from... Killing our opponent here. <laughs> Can we still kill them through the Thune? Block. Block, block. Go to five, shoot their face. I think you're dead even through the Archangel of Thune here. Alright, so... Choose you. Sacrifice this one. Bolt 
Get your face. Um. Hmm. So the problem is we still don't have um, any other cards we really want to board in. Not really interested in the third scavenge or the fourth scavenging use. I mean, Bay lost fine, but that's not really the game we want to be playing against them. So, are they f fetching around Blood Moon there? Um, sort of. Could potentially choke them on white if they don't have, like, a Bird of Paradise in particular. Hmm. And this deck is very powerful, especially, like, that draw right there is just insane. I can definitely see the power of a deck. I think there's just, like, little small, like, tweaks we want to make. Um, uh, hand's fine. It's not great. <clears throat> Mulligan to five, though. Card on top. No one drop. They are four color Kiki, looks like. It's ambitious. Sure. Scavenging is, huh? Not a card our opponent wants to really deal with. Go on his Geist plus Bolt next turn. Yep, all of them, sure. Opponent is definitely rebuilding the resources pretty quickly, despite the Mulligan to five. Birds are going to die. I said a bird's gonna die. Hmm. Does give us an interesting decision here. Bloxies. Birds gotta die, because the birds gotta die. Topia Sprawl is not a bad draw. Um, go with green here. So one, two, three, four. Guess I'm only sending in these two. I don't want to risk getting blown out by a freaking court of calling here. Sure. Restoration Angel's a good card here. Could still easily die to Kiki. Do you have the cord for Kiki Jiki? Kitchen thinks. Yeah, it's whatever. Hmm. It's so worth playing that you would own missionary, sure. Alright, eat your bird of paradise. Another Utopia Sprawl. Not we're particularly looking for here. Hmm. I'll probably 
it just block with a wall or something. <clears throat> yep, no way to punish him here. If we had a blood moon, that would be most amazing. That's not attacking with anything. I'd be at least attacking with Restoration Angel. Just my unprofessional opinion. Quarter calling, we're dead here. Looks like you do not. Another Arbor Elf, sure. So, two, three, four, five. Two creatures in the graveyard. Play out this Arbor Elf and pass. Yeah, if we ever draw a Stormbrat Dragon, they're just like dead in two hits. Don't want to fetch to thin because we do have tireless trackers in the deck, so there is that. Voice of Resurgence, sure. Like, I'd still be attacking with Restoration Angel at this point. Just saying. Lose the game here. Well, yep. I, I mean, I could care, but the reality is they're going to get kiki cheeky, and then we lose the game. Uh, otherwise known as I have kiki cheeky in my hand. Yep, that's the game. Little faux pas there with not eating the kitchen finks before it came back, but. The reality is, um, we were really kind of, kind of dead there either way. Yes, I would like to play first. Um, hmm. so, no turn one accelerant, but I think we still keep this hand. Especially against a blue deck. I can just grab what go ahead and grab a basic forest here. This this is where having the more resilient half of our deck might be relevant. So we'll have to stop and see. This is just Kyr. This is just straight blue white. Hmm. Bant. Interesting. Search for Ascanta. All right. So. Might be up uh, against something similar to Guillaume Matignon's list. It's possible I should have hit with like Finks there instead, just to avoid like getting blown out by a D sphere. 
Okay, so they put a land in the graveyard, so they must not need lands. That said, a lands and spells are nice for us here. Like, Blood Moon could really, really hurt them. Um... This is the game where having the stickier, stickier threats might matter, but I still think we need some other <clears throat> interactions in the sideboard, be they a braid or something along those lines. That was a long tank. All right, I mean, sure. Stomping ground untapped. Spin the wheel. Well, hello there, groundbreaker friend. Um are you dead, opponent? I think if you have a path to exile, you might have to use it here. Alright, so they have like Quicken Supreme Verdict. So I'm showing us Quicken was actually kind of relevant here. Blessed Alliance. Okay. So, sacrifice that. Go to one. Even the Supreme Verdict doesn't stabilize. Some very interesting cards to show us. All right, so they're a band control deck. We definitely want to leave in the that kind of stuff. Um, Storm Breath that comes in. Dire Fleet Daredevil. I don't know. Okay, let's start with what cards are not good in this matchup. Uh, P and Kieran aren't particularly fantastic. Um, probably interested in this Outpost Siege. Grudges, relics, scavenging uses. Cards are not great. Bolts aren't fantastic. Ward out a couple of those, maybe. Maybe bring in Dire Fleet Daredevil for another bolt. Go with that. Like, Blood Moon seems like it's kind of tricky for them to play around as a three color deck. Um, can't keep this hand. Uh, hand's okay. Probably not interested in another Arbor Elf, though. Basic planes go. So we want to hold up. Yeah, Path Exile, I guess. Arbor Elf, go. I'm gonna say, you don't want to path that one? It's unfortunate. Ah, Field of Ruin. Good card. We got another basic forest here. Play this Utopia Sprawl. Red mana. So I don't think you have a path, even if you do. We're still running out this turn to Bloodbraid Elf. Bloodbraid Elf is an amazing card. That said, if our opponent answers our tireless tracker here, we don't really have a whole lot going on, so. <sighs> kind of hoping for like a Blood Moon there or something. Magic 
online. Why do you do this sometimes? Magic Online, what are you doing? Come on, Magic Online. Looks like Magic Online is taking a crap. Good old internet being dumb for some reason. That's nice. Kind of care, but also don't. Try disconnecting again. Okay. Good old magic online. Sorry about the restart. So, positives about the deck. Deck's explosive. Um, the resilient threat thing has come up. Um, so we're playing against Bant here. The flip side is I still think we need more interaction, if not in the main deck, definitely in the sideboard. Um, we definitely want some amount of, like, a braids or stuff along those lines. Like, having another uh, interaction for Kiki might have been relevant there. A Kiki Chord matchup. Though I suspect that in general that's just a horrible matchup. I'd like to get back to the match, yes please? Alright, so... See if they had like a path to exile or something here. Alright, we're back. Quality Magic Online software here. <laughs> Utopia Sprawl floating off in nowhere land. In, in their field of ruins, kind of useless here. Alright, so they're on a path that's. Yes. Get our another basic forest. Kind of figured they had path by the way they were playing. Hopefully, you don't have like kitchen things here. Ruined Halo on Bloodbraid Elf. Tracker. We ought to need tireless tracker here. Get a clue. Okay, now it's finally fixed ish. Go ahead and put this on what? Red, I guess. Blue. Probably don't want to add anything more to this board. Kitchen thinks. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and pass. 
pass here. So our Bloodbraid Elf really does nothing. Okay, that one's got a bunch of useless Field of Ruins. Hmm. Groundbreaker. We got a Groundbreaker here. So what are the odds that our opponent has settled the wreckage here? Let's go ahead and pass. So if we're already attacking with these knuckleheads, I may as well attack with Bloodbraid Elf, so if they have settled the wreckage, I get that many more lands out of my deck. Pretty clear our opponent doesn't have another path. Doesn't seem like they have Wrath of God. Alright, am I supposed to add anything else to this board? Yes, I'm just supposed to add things just because. Kind of plays around wrath, sort of, not really. I mean, we have an Arbor Elf, does that count for something? Guessing Field of Ruin, go get a blue source here. Like field of ruin, go get a blue source. Oh, don't worry, we have a red source in reserve. Yep. <clears throat> okay, less alliance, sure. Guessing you have a wrath here. Because you need the blue source. Yep. Foothills and pass. <clears throat> okay, they have a kitchen fix of their own, sure. Molten rain. Sorry, stone rain. Got for your blue source here. I don't like you're doing anything for one blue mana. Ghost quarter, sure. <clears throat> I mean, they can kind of choke us on mana, but not really. Awkward waiting game with the control deck that's mana screwed. Feels really bad. Blood Moon would certainly be entertaining against them right now. Grab 
groundbreaker. Go for groundbreaker here. Again, for some amount of damage. Sure. goes back to seven. Past our opponent here. Well, it's still with no blue mana. <clears throat> Glaring wish for what? At least we know what the white splash is, or the green splash is for now. Sigarda. Scavenging news. Trade off, sure. Spell snare. That's kind of sucks. <clears throat> Search for as Kanta. All right. I mean, Kitchen thinks is sort of a card here. And Stormbreath still a pretty good out. Put you to six here. Hope you don't hit a land. Okay. I was gonna say it must have been a land. Very, very tense, awkward game. <clears throat> Soundcaster Mage on what? Blessed Alliance? Path to Exile. Okay. Hmm. 
see what we hit here. Dire Fleet Daredevil, huh? <clears throat> huh. Question is, what are we... Flashing this back on, though. This we take out the Blessed Alliance here. So, can I kill you by just going to combat, first of all? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Go to combat first. Use a cryptic commando here. Sure. Cast three, four, five. Stormbreath Dragon. <clears throat> so one, two, three, four. Alright, going to one here. Gotta have a Supreme Verdict. Supreme Verdict or Bust. Or I guess Snap Verdict would do it too. But then we have quite a few draws off the top that just kill them. So. Smells like a supreme verdict to me. Supreme verdict, yes. Two. Yep, snapcaster verdict. So any haste threat other than Bloodbird Elf kills you. So if we would have exiled Supreme Verdict, they would have been boned here. Alright, yeah, that, that'll do, Donkey, that'll do. Another Storm Barf. And... Storm Barf Dragon gets there. Alright, so overall thoughts on Zedek. Um, 
deck is very explosive. Um, the bolts are definitely reasonable. The split on resilient and hasty creatures seems good. I was a little bit skeptical about that. The Stormbreath Dragons as the top are very good. Um, the only takeaway I've had from this so far, like the mana's reasonable, the balance of spells is pretty decent, um, even this couple of Stone Rains in the main deck. The only takeaway is you want more uh, creature interaction. Either a Braids or Roasts or... Um, Something along those lines on the sideboard. Like, maybe an abrade or two over some of this other stuff. Um, we didn't get to see Ospo's Siege in, mat in the matchup. <clears throat> Beyond that, I mean, the rest of this dunk deck functioned pretty beautifully. It's a pretty good aggressive deck. Um, obviously, you have some life gain in the form of scavenging ooze and things against stuff like burn. So even decks that can conceivably undergo under go underneath you, like burn or affinity, you have a lot of answers for. Um, I'm thinking decks like humans and such, you're going to want some amount of just more answers. Things like a braid, things like uh, even something like searing blood, searing blaze. Um, might be a little bit harder to cast, so maybe certain blood and certain blaze are out, but things like a braid. Um, probably want some copies of that in the sideboard. Um, don't know if this fourth scavenging ooze is entirely necessary, uh, so maybe like cut a scavenging ooze and an ancient grudge for like two a braids. And this outpost siege just should probably be a third tireless tracker. Um, this third storm breath, I mean, the matchups were storm breath good, the card's just utterly amazing. So. Flies over the top of everything, has protection from white. Uh, very relevant in our control matchup. And then, yeah. Just some little tweaks here and there, and I think the deck is pretty good to go. Um, you know, you've got a fast clock. You've got a lot of graveyard disruption for things like uh, Storm. And even, I think, a couple copies of a Braid would help with the Storm matchup a little bit. Killing their mana idiots. Beyond that, I mean, the main deck's... This main deck configuration is pretty good. One of Pia Nolar, maybe you want like a second Pia Nolar in the same spot where you've got where I had the Alpo Siege, um, you know, against go wider affinity strategies, all kind of helps. So, uh, another card. Now, I don't think we get enough stuff in the graveyard. If we got a little bit more stuff in the graveyard, I would say something like Grim Lava Mancer would be pretty good, but we really don't put a lot of things in the graveyard outside of creatures dying in combat, so. Probably just stick with a braid. So, that's all I got for the deck. Deck was pretty sweet. Thanks for the, the list, Fury. Um, I'm hoping you're getting to see this pretty soon. But, I mean, the main 60 is pretty awesome. The sideboard, a little bit of tweaking can definitely be pretty reasonable against a lot of the matchups. Um, the Kiki Core deck, I think, is just a bad matchup for creature aggressive decks to begin with. So, not surprised to lose that one. Felt pretty good to beat the blue white. Uh, well, the Bant, Bant Wish deck, which is a little, a little bit clanky, but you know you have so many haste threats. You've got what four, eight, twelve, fourteen, fifteen haste threats after sideboard, and then you've got tireless trackers and kitchen finxes, which help in the grindy matchup or grindy-ish end of things. So, deck was pretty sweet. Uh, not much more to say. This has been Dust for Dust on Gaming here on YouTube.